What's up YouTube, Dar here from Zephyr, and today I'm going to bring you two very basic combos you need to know for Vanquish Souls. Now Vanquish Souls is definitely a meta contender right now, and post Ballast it could even be climbing up that ladder to be one of the top ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two combos, how you can get an insanely powerful end board through two cards, and how you can actually utilize to gain maximum value out of a card like Dimension Shifter. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you do not miss out on any more upcoming content. I'll also mention to you guys as well, before we dive too deep into it, how you can out skill drain. So before I show you the combo involving Raisin and Dimension Shifter, let's show you how you can utilize something like Vanquish Soul Caesar to deal with a skill drain. So unlike uh, Vanquish Soul Raisin and unlike the Panther that can deal with back row and front row but they must remain on the board, Caesar does not need to remain on the board. So you'll activate Caesar's effect, you will reveal an Earth, Fire and Dark in order to trigger its effect. So let's go with Earth, Fire and Dark. This will now allow you to trigger uh, Vanquish Soul Caesar's effect. And if your opponent was to respond with something like Imperm or if they already had Skill Drain face up on the field, what you can do as Chainlink 2 is you can activate your Borger targeting the Caesar. As the chain resolves backwards, you would return Vanquish Soul Caesar to the hand, summon Daniel Borger, and because Vanquish Soul Caesar is no longer on the board to be negated through skill drain or an imperm, you can then resolve his effect to destroy a card in the field, and that can very easily be that skill drain. That will then unlock your place for Soul, um, Vanquish Soul Raisin, and of course, your Borger as well. That's just a little quick preview, it's a little tip that not everyone knows about with this deck, uh, and I found that it's very, very important and helpful. So, let's go with our first combo. What happens if you open up Shifter and Raisin? This isn't the safest combo, but this is how you can get the most value from it. So you're gonna start off by normal summoning your Raisin. Raisin's effect is going to trigger to search you out your heavy Borger. You're then going to link your Raisin into the Rock of the Vanquished. And I know straight away a lot of you are gonna be like, what, hang on a minute, you've just put a monster in the graveyard, Shifter's completely useless. There is a reason for that and just watch to find out. So you're now going to use Rock of the Vanquish's effect to special summon down your Borger. You can then use Borger's effect to reveal the Shifter being a dark to draw a card. Now instantly your opponent might be like, oh, I ain't got to worry about Shifter, nothing's going to happen now, they've just drawn a card, how are they going to be able to clear their graveyard out? Well you pass your opponent's turn, during their draw phase, activate Borger's effect again, reveal the same Shifter, draw an additional card. Now keep in mind as well, if this was your starting hand, you would still have three more cards in there. So if you're playing a lot of hand trap build, if you're playing a bestial build, you're going to have plenty of interruptions should you need to. Now what you want to do in order to be able to activate Shifter is you're going to get to your opponent's main phase. Once it's their main phase and they pass priority back to you, activate Rock of the Vanquish, add back the Raisin to your hand, and now your Shifter is completely free to go, okay cool, discard Shifter, lock them out their entire graveyard. Not to mention, if you do open up a Beastial or have a Beastial in hand, you can then use that Beastial to banish the Shifter and you're clear enough to go for a second Shifter if you wanted to. So that's how you gain the most resource. Obviously, it's a little bit risky because if your opponent was to go main phase and then activate Imperm on your Rock of the Vanquish or activate in the draw phase, sorry, then you won't be able to add the Raisin back to the hand, meaning your Shifter is completely dead, but you still would have replenished your entire hand um, going second, which is uh, going first, which is really, really kind of cool. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through the combo of what happens or the strongest board you can get if you open up Fenrir or a route to Fenrir and of course your Vanquish Soul Raisin. So we're going to start off by specialing down the Fenrir. Fenrir's effect will trigger to search you out your Rise Heart. There we go. So we're going to search out our Rise Heart. And then what you're going to do here is you're going to normal summon your Raisin. Raisin's effect is going to trigger and you're going to search out the same card you did before. And that is of course going to be your Borger. At this point here, what you want to do is you want to be able to either uh, link your Raisin or you can go for Borger, but ideally you want to go for your Raisin into your Rock of the Vanquished. You then want to use Rock of the Vanquished effect to special summon down the Borger. If you have a Dark in your hand for the remaining three cards, of course you can reveal to draw a card, or if you have an Earth, you can reveal Fire and an Earth to burn your opponent for some life points. Then what you want to do is you want to overlay these two into a Shangri-La, and then you want to use the effect of Rise Heart to special summon it down. Now you could go one step further if you were to play the trap card in the deck, but we're not doing that because all it will really do is just give you an additional Fenrir on the board, which you don't need to because during the standby phase you're going to get the Shangri-La effect anyway. So now that you've resolved the effect of Rise Heart, you're going to use Shangri-La to lock a zone, and because you've used Shangri-La's effect this turn, you can now very easily rank your Rise Heart up into an Arise Heart. You're then going to pass your turn, and then by passing to your opponent's turn, you're going to go standby phase, you're going to use Shangri-La's effect. This is going to allow you to special summon out um, a Fenrir from the deck. I'm just going to use the one that is under it for now. 
And so your board basically ends with one zone locked, rise heart with one material. Yes, you'll be able to build up more materials as this goes and a Fenrir. Not to mention, you can also use Rock of the Vanquish Effect to add back the Raisin and then go from there. If you already have a Raisin in the hand, you can very easily use Rock of the Vanquish Effect to special summon down that Raisin, get you a nice search for Borgar while also trying to destroy whatever's in the opponent's column. Uh, and then that will, of course, trigger Rise Heart to start adding more materials to it. So it gets stronger if you have activated something like Pot of Prosperity or can activate Pot of Prosperity after making it. Um, but that really comes down to your personal build and playstyle. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. Two very simple direct rooted combos for the deck. And of course, the little tip and trick about being able to deal with a card like Skill Drain. So this deck is really, really fun. I really do enjoy it. It's kind of like my new competitive deck. Um, and I feel that it's only going to get better post ban list because worst case scenario, the Femra engine kind of gets hit and you're like, right, okay, not, an, not a massive issue. Um, I don't need to use it. Or even if Shangri-La got hit, that's when you'd probably, uh, not Shangri-La, sorry, a Rise Heart, that's when you'll then probably use the Trap card because then that will give you access to make two rank sevens. So you'd have a Shangri-La, plus you'd then be able to add like a Red Eyes Flare Metal um, or a Draco Sack to the board as well, along with your Rock. So there's still ways to play around with it. It really just comes down to personal preference and play style. But I thought these were kind of cool little tip trick um, plays that you might need to know in order to go forward, whether you are facing Cash Tears, uh, sorry, not Cash Tears, Vanquish Souls, or if you are building Vanquish Souls. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like I said at the start, any questions at all, by all means, please put them in the comments down below. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. But for now, as absolutely always, stay safe, and of course, happy dueling.